Just wanted to say good morning. My name is Lee Downey. I'm Director of Economic and Community Development for the City of Richmond. And I want to thank everybody for coming out so early on this great morning to help us celebrate the business community, the, the show our appreciation for the business community of the City of Richmond. We're here today not just to show our appreciation for the businesses of our great city, but we're also here to recognize and thank our friends and our partners, our neighbors and our families, our suppliers and our customers. The business community in our city is a tightly woven, diverse, and supportive community. It really is one of the pieces of Richmond that makes the city so great. As I was getting ready for this morning, thinking about what I would say when I got up here, I did some research into the statistics of existing business and what that means to a community. And let me just say I was overwhelmed by the amount of information out there about how important the business community is. There, there are far too many articles explaining the importance of existing business and far too many statistics talking about what existing business and the business community means to the creation of new jobs. Far too many to really weed through and pick the ones that I wanted to point out today. I could cite, there's an SBA article, Small Business Administration article from last year that talks about existing establishments and how they account for about 60% of new jobs in the private sector just one of many articles out there that show how important that is. But that's only part of the story. And as I read along and looked at statistics, I thought that's important. But I also want to point out that the business community not only creates the new jobs, it also supports the programs, charities, and organizations that serve our community. Our businesses have a stake in this community. And that's what drives them to contribute to the economic vitality and the social fabric of our, of our community. They understand the needs of the community and its people and its residents and its businesses and are able to respond effectively to what our city needs and what makes our city so great. And in addition, existing business is also a great group of ambassadors as we go out and try to grow and improve and bring more diversity to our business community. You are the ambassadors for the city. You're shining examples of what the city is and could be. This morning, as Change me, sorry about that. This morning, listen closely to the accomplishments and the community contributions of the businesses being honored here today. They represent the best of what our city has to offer, and they provide true examples of what a strong, thriving business community means. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna see examples, a very diverse sample of our, of our business community, and we wanna celebrate their successes and realize that we're looking at a piece of, of what makes Richmond great. And at this point, what I'd like to do is to introduce someone who is really the biggest supporter of our existing business community and fully understands how important existing business is to a community and is very supportive of the needs of our community. This time, I'd like to invite Mayor Dwight Jones to come up on stage. Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lee, and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, it's important for you to be here and important for us to be here to express our appreciation to all of the businesses that do so much to make our city a vital city. I recognize the importance of uh, getting new businesses to come to Richmond, but I also recognize the importance of retaining the businesses that we have, and that's what today is about. It's about recognizing the businesses that are here in the city of Richmond and allowing you to understand that we understand your importance. I want to begin by recognizing some people who are here uh, from city government and uh, three of our city council persons are here. <clears throat> and I'd like for you to recognize them this morning. John Belisles is here. John. <laughs> from the first district and from the fifth district, Parker Angelesto is here. And from the 9th District, Michelle Mosby is here. When people ask me how the city is doing and how the city is moving forward and how we are experiencing such growth and vitality, I tell them many, many things and I'm going to mention some of those things as I talk to you. But one of the things I tell them is that we have a great and thriving business community that is completely supportive of the city. And for that, I am deeply grateful. You're here today and your businesses are here today because you recognize 
that we have a burgeoning and uh, delightful city that is beaming with potential, thriving with new development, and attracting national attention every time we turn around. Just think about the last uh, months, the last year. Hoopstown, USA. Uh, the US UCI 2015 championships are going to come here. The location for the filming of Lincoln, and now uh, Killing Kennedy, if I have that correct. Uh, the uh, Redskins are coming. Peter, you you're listening? <laughs> the Redskins are coming. Bon Secor uh, is helping us with that, and all of you have helped us with that in terms of planning, and we look forward to that. And so all of us can agree that we're in a great community. Do you agree, do you agree with me on that? <laughs> a great community and great community leaders. And uh, I look around the room and see so many that I have worked with on a personal basis, Ned uh, Massey at uh, Mead West Vaco and Tanya Mallory back there and Peter uh, Bernard over here and John Carroll at the uh, Hilton and Tom Silvestri, just to name a few of the people that I work with on a consistent basis and then many of the companies that are being uh, recognized today, the Retail Merchants Association and I know as a person who's been involved in public life that it's dangerous to begin calling names. Uh, but it's important for us to say today that we recognize the businesses that have helped us make Richmond a strong city and we recognize that you are a big part of that. And so we want to thank you for locating your businesses here and expanding your businesses here for the commitment that you have made to the city of Richmond. And today what we're going to do is honor businesses during Business Appreciation Week, and we're going to highlight uh, another slate of companies. Uh, we're going to honor uh, a slate of companies who are doing things in a magnificent way. And what I want to do is to award these recipients uh, this award that they will receive today to allow them to know how much they are appreciated in the city of Richmond. Uh, we have a lot of work to do to continue to move the city forward, and we can't do it without companies like your company. We can't do it without people like you. Our existing, uh, existing business base accounts for, listen to this, our existing business base accounts for more than 65% of the jobs that are <clears throat> created in the city. And many local companies have plans and means to expand and create uh, more jobs, and if you're thinking about expanding, go for it. If you're thinking about uh, doing uh, more in terms of creating more jobs, we certainly want to uh, encourage you to do that. We also have a lot of prospects in the pipeline of businesses that we hope will come to the city to help expand the city's tax base. As we recognize this impressive list of honorees today, these recognitions are only scratching the surface of those who come together to make our city great. And so on many levels, there are those who are committed to the advancement of our city, to our success, to the revitalization of our city, our growth, and our future. And so we want to thank you for coming out to this early morning uh, breakfast at the, uh, one of the greatest museums in the United States of America, uh, the Virginia Museum. And uh, also, we want to congratulate you again for all of the work that you do, and we hope that you will continue to be supportive of the city of Richmond. Thanks so much for being here today. What I'd like to do now is move into the, uh, the board's presentation part of the program, and there will be a few different presenters, but I'd like to start off, um, I'll begin with the Business Retention Award. The Business Retention Award is given to a, a, a longtime member of the business community who's contributed to job creation, retention, revenue generation, and has made significant strides in, community, in the community and business fields. This year's Business Retention Award is being presented to the Legend Brewing, Co Legend Brewing Company. Legend Brewing Company was started in 1993 by Thomas Martin. It was at that time composed of a 10 barrel brewing system with a small 15 seat pub attached and two employees. During the last 19 years, Legend has grown to a 30 barrel system that brews eight to nine times a week and employs a seven person brew staff with another nine people in office sales and support staff. 
The pub that everyone knows so well is opened in 1998 and employs as many as 40 kitchen staff during the busy deck season. Over the years, Legend Brewing Company has partnered with a variety of local organizations such as the Virginia Army National Guard, the Science Museum of Virginia, the Massey Cancer Center, and the Richmond Fire Department. The, the Legend Brewery also conducts tours which brings in people from all over the country and as many of us know, from all over the world. They have international visitors to the brewery. And I wanted to point out that the Legend Brewing Company is preparing to celebrate its 20th year of producing fine craft beers in Richmond. So having said that, at this point, I would like to invite Dave Gott up to the stage to receive the award, and we're going to see a short video about the Legend Brewing Company. In 1993, uh, Tom Martin, the owner, had the idea that he wanted to start a uh, small microbrewery. And uh, the story he's always told me is he kind of came on this spot and um, there were some good incentives from the city for this particular area. And uh, he said he stood on this hilltop and looked across the river and said, yeah, this is definitely the place I would like to put a brewery and maybe someday put a nice brew pub with a big deck. And um, lo and behold, uh, here we are. When we started out, uh, it was Tom and it was Tom alone. He was brewer, sandwich maker, and uh, beer server, as well as grass cutter, uh, you know, painter, custodian, you name it, he did everything. Here we are almost 20 years later, we've grown to um, having 16 full-time people downstairs in the brewery, a full maintenance crew, a whole bunch of folks, office staff, sales staff, and as many as 40 people up here at any given time, depending on the weather. So uh, we went from a one-man operation to employing as many as 60 people at a time. Yeah, when we started, uh, Dominion Brewing Company was uh, operating up in Ashburn, Virginia. Um, they were the largest and oldest operating Virginia brewery. They, of course, bought by Anheuser-Busch, moved out of state, which kind of leaves us as the oldest operating microbrewery in Virginia. Um, it's kind of a nice title to have, and uh, you know, we feel like we have uh, been able to grow through the years with it. You know, we've, we've been able to help some of the smaller breweries coming up with uh, with some guidance and some information and, and things of that nature. When um, Hardywood Brewing Company, uh, when they first opened up, uh, we were one of the first places to have one of their taps. We wanted to, uh, you know, we wanted to be out there and support the new brewery in town. We brought one of their beers in and, and put it on as a guest tap. And we were really excited to be able to support them. Um, we were the only game in town for a long time. We have tried to keep up with the market. We realize that just making good beer not always enough. You have to have a good marketing idea as well now. So um, one of our brewers, or several of our brewers really, were sitting down one day talking and they came up with the Urban Legend series in which we are taking, we're going to create four beers each year, base them on local legends um, from around the town, and then utilize that as sort of uh, to help market the product and to give uh, you know, the real beer enthusiasts something to get excited about. And it's, it's gone great so far. We have the first one is done. And that was the Guardian Dog Doppelbach. The um, Lost City of Richmond Saison is the one that is out there now. And later in the year, we'll be releasing the Locomotive 231, which is the train that's buried under Church Hill, and the, uh, the Richmond Vampire Beer, uh, Imperial Red Ale, based on the uh, vampire legend in Hollywood Cemetery. So that, of course, will be coming out around Halloween. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of great successes. Um, Richmond has been tremendous to us. The people of Richmond, the beer drinkers of Richmond are, as far as I'm concerned, some of the best in the world. They've been very loyal. Uh, they've been great to us. They uh, have sent us pictures of our beer that they've taken all over creation. It seems like every time you turn around, we're getting a picture from somewhere where somebody's standing there with a legend bottle. We love what we do and we love this place and we love our brand. And um, one of the most satisfying things in the world is to be out somewhere and people, you know, they'll see your shirt or something and say, oh my gosh, that's my favorite beer. Um, it doesn't really get any better than that. Awards are great. We are thrilled to be recognized by the city. We'd like to think we've given a lot to the city. The city has been great to us. I think it's been, it's been a wonderful uh, collaboration with the city of Richmond. And uh, the people of Richmond, as I said, they've been very supportive. And, and um, you know, we love to hear that, that people love our beer. And we appreciate the fact that the city has been there for us. Thank you, Lee. Mayor, Sheila, and uh, Betty Ann, I know you're out there somewhere too. Um, when I walked in this morning and realized I was the first one to get an award, the first question I asked was, do I actually have to say anything? Um, 
I, I guess I just did, though, so I'll be very short. I just want to thank you all, thank Richmond. Um, we're particularly proud of this award. It, it, it tells us that the city of Richmond is as proud of us as we are uh, being a part of the city of Richmond. Um, we're about to celebrate 20 years. I look forward to uh, maybe being up here, eh, maybe in 40, uh, when we celebrate. Four, I probably won't look this good then. Um, but, but I look forward, we all look forward to growing in the Manchester area. It's up and coming, and we're excited to be a part of it. We love Richmond. It's been great to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next award I'd like to present is the Business Expansion Award. The Expansion Award goes to business and or or organization that has extensively expanded its footprint in Richmond and re created or retained career opportunities for the city. This year's Business Expansion Award will go to Hardywood Park Craft Brewery. Since opening in 2011, Hardywood Craft Brewery pursues, has pursued organic and sustainable growth. In December 2012, Hardywood purchased 2410 Ombi Lane to accommodate its needs for more space. The new building has also freed up space and altogether allowed for more than $750,000 in equipment investment. By the end of 2013, the expansion will create more than 20 jobs and increase the brewery's production capacity by more than 50%. Collaboration with local farmers and artisans in the hall is a hallmark of Hardy Woods Reserve Series of Beer. And is hoped to become a steward for environmentally friendly, responsible manufacturing, Hardy Wood obtains 100% of its electricity from renewable sources through the Dominion Green Power Program. It donates all of its spent grain to local farmers as feed. It utilizes local, naturally fallen wood for its tap handles, furniture, and mash paddles. And it maintains a comprehensive recycling program. At this point, I would like to introduce Eric McKay and Patrick Murtaugh to the stage, and we'll see a short video about Hardywood. Hardywood Park Craft Brewery is a, a production brewery. We're classified by the Brewers Association as a microbrewery because we're still very small. But when we opened, our production capacity was about 1,400 barrels per year. Right out of the gates, we hit our capacity selling mostly to bars and restaurants and to, to local stores in the Richmond area and over the past year and a half have tripled our capacity to about 4,800 barrels per year. So when we opened, we leased this building, which is a, a 12,000 square foot warehouse facility. And in December of last year, we purchased the building adjacent to us. We were definitely starting to feel some crunch in terms of um, not having a lot of storage space and everyone was sort of uh, working on top of everyone. So it worked out really well for us to be able to buy the building right next door. Directly as a result of our expansion, we've grown from about a six-person company to a 22-person company. Half of our employees work on the production side of the business, so in manufacturing jobs, and the other half work uh, mostly part-time on the hospitality side of the business as servers. But right now we're canning our first beer. It's called Capital Trail Pale Ale. It was a collaboration we did with the uh, Capitol Trail Foundation. We don't have a canning line here, so we partnered with Mike Horn from Old Dominion Canning, Mobile Canning. Canning beer has a really rich tradition in Richmond. The first canned beer ever sold in the U.S. was sold in Richmond. We've really found a lot of inspiration in uh, a lot of the uh, growers, the farmers, the artisans around Richmond to uh, collaborate with and to create some really interesting, great beers with. When we wrote our business plan, we had no idea how fast we'd be growing. And uh, just the community has really embraced us and allowed us to grow. And I think the most, um, the biggest source of pride is the jobs we've been able to curry, create through our expansion. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Mayor Jones, Sheila, Betty Ann. This is an incredible honor for us. We're um, truly honored to be a part of the Richmond business community, and this certainly represents an extraordinary team effort, um, and have been lucky to be able to find uh, such talent right here in Richmond, and uh, are just overwhelmed and um, honored to be um, chosen alongside of our good friends at Legend and look forward to many more uh, years of um, working with, with them and the other new breweries that have opened to bring 
uh, Great Beard of Richmond and make Richmond a, uh, a more uh, culturally, culturally um, interesting and better beer town. So <laughs> thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to ask Denise Laws to come up for the next presentation. Good morning. Good morning. I have the privilege of introducing the Docker Family Dentistry for the next award. He's located within one of our care areas. Dr. Siri Docker is the owner of Docker Family Dentistry and he graduated from the VCU School of Dentistry in 1999 and has been running a thriving dental office in Henrico County since 2000. Two years ago, he was joined by his son, Aditya Docker, at his new location, 1633 Williamsburg Road in the Fulton Hill area. The company received assistance from economic and community development care and enterprise zone programs. They also took advantage of the city's tax, real estate tax abatement program. Dr. Docker, <laughs> we practiced this this morning, <laughs> invested approximately 330,000 in the property and he created four full-time jobs and three part-time jobs. And I'm assuming there is a video for Mr. Docker as well. I am Surya Dhakar. Well, I want to serve in the area where my services will be needed more. And I thought Fulton uh, does not have any dentist in this area. And we can serve the people and uh, we'll be happy. And the people of the Fulton area will also be happy. And my staff, they live close by in this area. We have created four jobs permanent, full time. And we'll be creating two more jobs next month because we'll be hiring one more assistant dental assistant and one dental hygienist. We started in November, uh, November 1st, and uh, first three months we were getting almost 90 new patients every month. So up to January we got 270 patients. Best part, we accept Medicaid, we accept Medicare. I feel a great sense of pride in opening my dental office in the uh, care area where there is a shortage of dentist. So I'm very happy. I really would like Keisha Pachette to present this award. She worked closely with Dr. Kakar. It is with great pleasure that I present this award to Dr. Decker Dental. It's a great honor for me and my staff to receive this award from the city of Richmond. My son, who is also a dentist, and I, we both enjoy serving the people of the Ful Greater Fulton area and it warms my heart when we receive this kind of award from the city of Richmond. And I would especially like to thank Keisha Burchett, the care program coordinator for her support and Mayor Jones for his special interest in community revitalization and economic development of the area. Thank you. The next award goes to our Enterprise Zone Business of the Year, Tektronics Design Group. Tektronics Design Group is owned by Christopher Hill Brand and Himata Hisler. It's a manufacturing and industrial design studio located in Manchester since 2004. The business was recently faced with the challenge of a steadily growing range of services while outgrowing its leased commercial space. The company relocated to 2012 
relocated in 2012 to 702 East 4th Street in one of our Richmond Enterprise Zone areas. The new location offers a much larger facility allowing the company to remain in the Manchester area and retain its close collaboration with other local manufacturing businesses such as OK Foundry, a local fourth generation foundry also located in Manchester. The facility has allowed the firm to both expand their operations and increase their production capacity, including the creation of three full-time jobs. They invested approximately $300,000 into this facility. We will now see a video on Tektronics. My business partner, Hinmaton Heisler, and I were up in Connecticut, and we considered several cities. Uh, we came down and visited Richmond, and it was a very welcoming uh, environment and had a, a lot of affordable places for us to land. We moved here in August of 2003 um, and we landed in a 5,000 square foot uh, building that or space inside of a, a building. We had columns every 12 feet and we used to have to drive the forklift around the column to get by it with a big, a big pallet. Um, now we have 20,000 square feet and we've got great natural light and open access and, um, and about 40 feet of free span inside now. So everything's getting a lot easier. And we basically were able to take advantage of every single enterprise zone um, opportunity there was. The developer rebate, the uh, brownfields rebate, the relocation uh, rebate, and uh, next year we're gonna apply for the state land grant. Well, Manchester is a, a seat of the kind of historic manufacturing area of Richmond. Um, so we're extremely happy that we were able to buy our piece of it. It's exciting to me. And, and Richmond's a, got a very dynamic uh, design and manufacturing base. The origin of the company really was custom design and fabrication. Um, over the last 10 years that has uh, expanded around woodwork, metalwork, plastics, uh, ornamental metals and furniture and other products. Uh, as we purchased and acquired new equipment and developed additional capabilities, our business expanded and redefined itself. And in the last uh, three or four years, we've really been growing our machine shop and uh, developing some of our own product lines uh, so that we can become our own client. Well, we just started with the two of us, uh, and right now we have five employees full-time. We're bringing on another one now. Uh, as we grow from the move and acquiring some new equipment, we're going to need to fill uh, more roles. So I, we're projecting that we're going to need three or four more people in the next year. I think our business is unique in that we are designers and manufacturers, and we end up uh, working as colleagues with other de design firms. Some people might look at us and say, well, we're competitors, but everybody has a different capability of some sort. So to, to me, it just looks like an expansion of capability. Um, we work together on a regular basis, and um, it, it actually makes a stronger network and a stronger you know, offering of what services we can provide. It is pretty satisfying to see that our business has gone from being uh, a garage startup with two people sleeping in the shop to being at a place where they're, you know, we're getting recognition by the city that we're a part of. So it, it means a lot to, in both respects. Receiving this award means a lot to me. I'd like to thank the City of Richmond and uh, the Economic Development Office, uh, specifically Lizbeth Coker, who over the years has helped us take advantage of the programs available uh, repeatedly and helped us grow our company uh, really substantially. And uh, I'd also like to thank all the great businesses that are in Richmond that we collaborate with. Um, we primarily do business to business work and uh, it's just a real honor and pleasure to be part of Richmond. So thank you very much. The 
The next award that I'd like to present is called the Community Impact Award. And this award goes to a business organization that has had the improvement and what it has help the improvement and well-being of Richmond citizens, creating opportunities for economic growth and neighborhood sustainability. This year's Community Impact Award is being presented to Bon Secours Virginia Health System. Bon Secours is being recognized for the second year in a row as a recipient of the Community Impact Award. Part of Bon Secours' mission is to help bring people and communities to health and wholeness. The good work of Bon Secours extends beyond the hospital and medical office doors. Bon Secours has extensive involvement in Richmond's East End through programs such as SEED, which is supporting East End entrepreneurship development, in which Bon Secours has committed more than $100,000 in renewable funding awards towards, towards revital, revitalization efforts. Sorry, it's a tongue twister for me. The Community and Hospital Health Outcomes Partnership, in which their team works with local physicians to lower children's body mass index, BMI, and to influence healthy lifestyle choices. And also, I'd like to talk about Move Mania, Bon Secours Healthy Kids Initiative, whose influence has extended to over 100 classrooms in the Richmond area. Most recently, Bon Secours entered into a new partnership with the City of Richmond to build a summer training camp for the Washington Redskins. This project, this project will bring an estimated $40 million in investment back into the City of Richmond and hundreds of new jobs related to the new training camp, expansion of hospital services in the East End, and anticipated development in West Hampton. At this point, I'd like to show a short video, and I'd also like to invite Peter Bernard to join me on stage. Long before the first snap of the season, the first roar of the crowd, before the first bone-crunching tackle and game-changing interception, before the first scintillating one-handed catch and touchdown celebration, is the first day, the first speech, and that first jolt you feel when your coach tells you there are 31 other teams who all want exactly what you want. So you're going to have to want it that much more. In order to outperform them, you're going to have to outwork them, outwill them, and outtrain them. And in that moment, you realize if you want to make it to the Super Bowl, first you have to make it through Richmond. We built it and they're coming. Summer 2013. The Bon Secours Washington Redskins Training Center. But make no mistake, this isn't just about football. It never was. This is about all of us. This is about pride and how one city, one team, and one health system are coming together to build something special for an entire state and region. This is about improving our city strengthening our economy, boosting tourism, and carrying out Bon Secours' mission of building healthier communities. It's about new programs to keep our kids healthy, give them role models, and get them moving. It's about providing the latest innovations in sports medicine for all athletes in our community, and a new facility devoted exclusively to men's health. It's about expanding and improving Bon Secours facilities from the south side to the north side, from the east end to the West End and bringing even more good help to those in need. And it's about time. We're not just making a difference. We're making history. All of this is happening right here, right now, right in our own backyard. And there are so many ways you can become a part of it. As a fan, as a family, as a sponsor, and even as a neighbor. We're not just going to build a stronger football team. We're going to build a stronger community. The Redskins are in. Are you? The Bon Secours Washington Redskins Training Center. Building champions in football and in life. Now playing in Richmond. Visit redskinsrva.bonsecours.com. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you very much. This has just been a real honor and a pleasure, and um, I think it's a testimony to, um, to the mayor and uh, to his team as working closely with, uh, with our faith-based organization that started in 1824 in Paris. And when I got here about 10 years ago or so, the sisters gave me at least one fundamental principle, and that is don't screw it up. And... Uh, <clears throat> But uh, 
you know, it was interesting because the, the mayor asked earlier if I was listening. And so having worked with him for the last few years, he's picked up uh, that um, I'm ADD. And uh, I'm, I'm working on that uh, to, for, in terms of more focus. So Tanya Mallory is running a number of lab tests from her, uh, from her organization. And I'm hoping to be fixed here within the next six months to do a better job. But with that said, there's just been a lot of great things with, with the city and ourselves. Uh, we look at uh, the East End in particular, given our interest in, in giving back to the community on the poor and the underserved. And uh, Richmond Community Hospital, I'm proud to say, three years ago for the first time in its 100 year history, made money. And this year is having a phenomenal year. And we look at that as the economic engine uh, to the community. And, and it was mentioned to the remarks prior to me was the seed applications, and, and we've got now over a, uh, you know, a dozen uh, new businesses, and, and uh, we hope to continue to do that uh, year after year as we try to revitalize the economic uh, stability of, of Churchill. And, um, and most importantly, um, there, there's a couple of organizations over there that are struggling as well. Um, uh, Creighton Courts uh, is needing some assistance. We're strategizing on that. Uh, uh, the closed Armstrong School. Um, we're getting pretty good at uh, revitalizing closed schools. And that's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, uh, we're not only proud of the fact that uh, this Washington Redskins, I didn't realize how many closed uh, closet type uh, Redskins, being from Chicago and a Bears fan, this has been kind of an interesting challenge for me. Uh, but um, I, I don't bring that up at all. Uh, and uh, we don't have actually all kinds of tickets, so for any of you that come and ask me for that today, uh, there's only a couple that, uh, that I'm privy to. And, uh, but uh, again, um, I think uh, uh, the Moving Mania uh, project will be headquartered at, um, at the Redskins training camp. Uh, they're just a fabulous organization, are very community oriented. They've got a lot of number of uh, discussions that we've had over the last couple of months about how they want to give back to the community. So I think you'll see a lot of things there. Uh, we're now in over 200 classrooms uh, in, the, in the Richmond uh, city, uh, teaching and, and helping with uh, childhood obesity. And so when you look at the Richmond Times Dispatch a few months ago, uh, we were ranked number one in that regard, so we're really focusing on second, third, and fourth graders. Uh, we're committing a lot of resources to that, and, uh, and a lot of my staff are, are helping with those particular activities. And uh, I think um, not only the seed money, but also, um, you know, there's grocery stores, libraries, and things of that sort uh, on the East End, and, and we look at ourselves as a catalyst to uh, to, make a, to, to make a significant contribution uh, there, but also uh, to continue our relationship and prosper with this public-private uh, relationship that we've got with, uh, with the mayor and his staff. So a heartfelt thanks to, uh, to you, Mayor, for, for everything you've done for our ministry, and I look for a bright future going together as well, not only with you, but uh, for the community as a whole. So uh, thank you for the honor of uh, giving our organization this award. This time I'd like to invite Anidra Bourne up to present the Tourism Award. Good morning. More than four, for more than 44 years, the Virginia Tourism Corporation and the Virginia Film Office have been promoting the Virginia is for Lovers brand. And this past, excuse me, in the past year, our state capital has gained top billing. Most importantly, we were able to welcome back a repeat visitor, Abraham Lincoln. More than nine years in the making, this was truly a labor of love, and the film was entirely shot in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Most of those locations uh, were included here in Richmond and Petersburg, including the back lot, which was at our very own Virginia State Capitol. Nominated for 12 Academy Awards, and winning the production design honor for Steven Spielberg's Lincoln. The Virginia Film Office, a branch of the Virginia Tourism Corporation, was responsible for, excuse me, the, the landscapes and the historic architecture, which was the major backdrop for this particular film and had everything to do with gaining this accolade. 
The filming of Lincoln generated direct expenditures of more than $32.4 million, with a total economic impact in the Commonwealth of $64.1 million. Nearly 1,200 Virginia-based actors and extras were hired by the film company, in addition to 380 crew members who averaged more than 23,000 room nights in local hotels and apartments that were utilized. One of the most significant accolades that we received was from the director of photography, Janusz Kaminski. He stated, quote, Richmond, Virginia was amazing. It's got great period architecture, and the city welcomed us in a way that very few cities ever welcomed us before. And it was good to be there to film on locations that were part of the true events. One of the most significant pieces of our city is that we are authentic, and this film was able to showcase that for the masses. We'll watch a viewing of the um, Virginia Tourism Corporation. You know, the mission of the film office is to create jobs in Virginia at the end of the day. And uh, we're part of the economic development strategy of the Commonwealth, part of Virginia Tourism Corporation, because really when a film company comes into a region, I like to say they're like super tourists with a payroll. They come in and they affect all parts of the economy, including hotel rooms, restaurants, uh, hiring people with very significant paychecks. So at the same time, when production comes, they spend a lot of money into a region, but also some particular projects can have ancillary value as a tourism opportunity, like dirty dancing up in the mountains. Many people would come for years to visit uh, Mountain Lake Resort of Giles County to see where the movie was filmed. And there are so many movies historically that have had that kind of draw. And certainly Lincoln was the most recent example of that here in the Richmond area. Personally, I started working on it in February of 2003. So now it's been over 10 years in the making. Over time, as the movie would start and stop, it, it almost became around the office like uh, 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 this mythical event. It's like Bigfoot or something. Is it, this movie ever really going to happen? So we kept having confidence and we kept sending pictures and, 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 and you know, kept communicating with the clients. And finally, in uh, November of 2010, uh, we had one of the final scouts where it looked like the movie actually was going to maybe have a shot of, of going into production. And Steven Spielberg came in for a scout, which he rarely does, but he came in and we looked around Richmond, looked around Capitol Square. It really came down to being able to uh, utilize Capitol Square as basically a back lot for the film. And uh, once he saw all the assets that were right in central Richmond around Capitol Square, it became economically viable for them to come here. So once they came, in fact, the expenditures in Richmond were phenomenal. I mean, over 25,000 hotel room nights were used by the production company. Um, 1,200 uh, full-time equivalent jobs were, were created while they were here filming. And they, the economic impact of the film at the end of the day was about $64 million in 55 days of filming. The additional value that Lincoln brought to the region uh, was related to tourism, obviously. We set up the Lincoln Trail. You can go to the Virginia.org tourism website and go on this trail and visit the sites where Spielberg shot the movie and where actually Abraham Lincoln actually visited Richmond. So it's just an amazing way to leverage the uh, attention to the film worldwide and attract visitors to come and, and check out the sites where the movie was made. In fact, on the, uh, the DVD, the Blu-ray of, of Lincoln, Spielberg's Lincoln, there's a video piece that Steven Spielberg produced for us and for Virginia that really is a testament to Richmond and a call to action to invite people to come visit Richmond. Steven Spielberg's Lincoln is an international success and fans will want to come to Richmond to walk in the footsteps of Daniel Day-Lewis, Sally Field, and Tommy Lee Jones and that great cast who have had such a fun time here in Richmond. Richmond's Lincoln Movie Trail is an incredible opportunity for our visitors to come and experience Richmond and see exactly what the crew did and do the things that they did while they lived in Richmond. Virginia is for Lincoln lovers. And I'd like to invite Andy Edmonds, director of the Virginia Film Office. Thank you. We are so lucky. After seeing that video, we're so lucky that I work behind the camera instead of in front of the camera. <laughs> Now, Rita McClinney, on the other hand, she could work on both sides of the cameras, we can all agree. We should give a hand to Rita McClinney. She's out of state, she would love to be here, but she's out promoting Virginia right now. Rita McClinney. You know, it's been my pleasure to work uh, at the film office for 16 years, and uh, Rita has been my leader there for so long, and a great friend and colleague, and 
uh, you know, over time, I've had a great opportunity to work on so many successes in the city of Richmond. I love this city. I love to be able to wake up every day and promote Virginia, and especially Richmond, because Richmond is a unique palette for filmmakers where they can find any kind of look for any kind of film. You know, we're very much a chameleon city. Right now, as a matter of fact, we're working on a film, and we're playing Richmond as Dallas, Washington, and Minsk, Russia. So we can pretty much do anything right here in, in Richmond. Uh, but over that time, you know, we've had a great opportunity to create a, an amazing partnership with our friends at the city of Richmond because it really takes cooperation. On Lincoln in particular, there are over 22 state agencies that touch this project and multiple, multiple city agencies from public works to police to fire to rescue. Uh, everyone had to step up to make this a great experience for our clients coming in. And I got to tell you, the greatest payoff for me was on the last day of filming, uh, Steven Spielberg did look at me and say, you know what? we will be back. So that's what we like to hear. So we want to bring them back. And thank you so much for your support. And thank you all on behalf of the Tourism and Virginia Film Office for this great award. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Vicki Rivers to come up and help present the next award for Minority Business of the Year Award. Good morning. This award is given to a minority business that's owned and operated by a minority. One that has achieved great success not only for themselves but also for others. It gives me great pleasure today to give this award to Clean Care Team Incorporated. To tell you a little bit about Clean Care, the values of the CEO, Ms. Sharon Wildridge, represents a journey by a single mother to a business that created more than 100 jobs throughout the city of Richmond. She grew up in the city and she observed her father who had a small grocery store. While attending college, she started out very slowly. She had a business lease over in the Advantech building of only 300 square feet. Today, she occupies over 4,300 square feet in the Manchester area. One of Clean Care's most cutting edge features is its development of environmentally safe cleaning products. Clean Care perhaps is the first green cleaning company in central Virginia. She is LEED certified and she continues to grow and diversify her client base. We'll see a short video on Clean Care, and I'll ask Ms. Wooldridge to join me here. Clean Care is a full-service uh, facilities maintenance and operation company. We offer custodial, janitorial, housekeeping, uh, health care, cleaning, green cleaning, residential cleaning, high-rise window cleaning, and a full array of services, anything that you need. To I started in 1986. Um, I, it was just me at first and then I got two other individuals to help me as far as residential. When I got my first government contract, I went to this um, uh, federal agency down at Fort Lee. It was their headquarters there and it was a huge building and I needed at least 15 people. So that was the beginning of me hiring a cleaning force at that time. And I was doing interviews in libraries and, and using other folks' conference rooms. And then I found out about the incubator, which is known as Advantech at Fifth and Franklin. Um, that's our first official office. It was great to give the company that image and branding it needed to let people know that we're a professional company and we're in business uh, to do business with the community. And we started there. Uh, I believe it's in 2001, and we stayed there until 2006. I moved into the Manchester uh, district in 2006. It's uh, conveniently located. It's right beside 95. It's close to downtown by the river. It's, it's, a, it's a great location for the company. We have, depending on projects, I think we're teeter-tottering around about 105. We've had as many as 250 in our workforce, though. 
I started lead cleaning in year 2000 and how I got into green is because I was cleaning the homes and it was causing issues for me as far as respiratory, cleaning with those toxic chemicals and I knew I had to do something different. So what I decided to do is do some research and then that's when I got into green cleaning and started using chemicals that were less toxic and then it kind of evolved. Clean Care was one of the first in the area or in the region to offer such type of green, such type of cleaning. First of all, I advice is to have a passion. It's key to have a passion for whatever it is that you do. You must have a passion uh, for it, perseverance, and prayer. Uh, that's what helped me along the way. I call it the three P's. Twenty-seven years. Um, thank you so much um, for this honor, Mayor um, Lee and uh, Pat Foster, which is a, a big advocate of mine. Um, Mayor, you've been such an advocate for small business, women-owned businesses, and um, minority business in the city. And I want to thank you for all your efforts and hard work. I also want to thank my staff. They're here today to support me. Without them, I couldn't have done this. Um, they, they've been incredible. They've been a great support to me. And I want to thank them for all that they do. I also want to thank the frontline folks, the hundreds of so folks that uh, help make it happen. Uh, they deliver and make us heroes to our clients. And I want to say thank you. It's a great honor. Thank you. And I'd like to now present our, our final award of the, of the morning, afternoon, it's morning. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. The uh, Business First Volunteer of the Year Award. Business First is a program, it's a, a very powerful and much needed program. What the city does, uh, economic and community development does, is works with a, a large group of volunteers to get out and visit the existing business community. Um, we, we feel like people that are in the business community, like I said earlier, are the best ambassadors and can really get up there and talk the talk with other businesses and learn about what's going on, what their needs are, their concerns, their issues, expansion plans, and really get out and get a good feel for the business community and bring it back to us. Um, I, I participated in this program before I worked for the city and found it to be wonderful for me to know what was going on in the community, but I was able to talk across the table with another business and learn about them. We have two recipients of the, of the Business First Volunteer of the Year Award this year. The first is Julian Williams, a longtime resident of Richmond. Julian Williams is employed as a financial representative of Northwestern Mutual. For more than seven years, he's played an integral part in the business outreach program. Uh, Mr. Williams has contributed enormously in promoting, to, in promoting the city of Richmond and its economic development initiatives. And the second business first volunteer of the year award will go to Gary Burton. He's a 12-year City of Richmond employee and works in the Department of Planning and Development Review as a senior planner for small business and commercial development. He regularly coordinates with the city's economic and community development department. And during the course of his interaction with volunteering for business first, he's met with more than 50 business clients in the two years that he's been volunteering. So at this time, I would like to invite those two gentlemen up to the stage to receive their award. Well, I'm a Richmond native, and um, I got involved in business first um, as a result of a phone call, and um, have been involved in business first for eight years. Uh, it continues to be a growing process, um, and I'm learning a lot about the city of Richmond, uh, which is very exciting to me. Uh, this is a wonderful community, and uh, it's got a fabulous future in front of it. And I, quite frankly, am very excited um, by what Business First is doing. I see our mission on Business First as being um, handling a lot of the day-to-day -day frustrations and being able to give them a sense that um, they actually can talk to somebody who can get something done. Uh, I think it's important to the city because the business owners who are located in the city of Richmond 
are our customers. And uh, when I go out to speak to them, I thank them, first of all, for locating in Richmond because they have choices. And life is full of challenges, business is full of challenges, and they've chosen to be with us. So I thank them for their participation, their locating here, and um, then I go on with the presentation trying to find out if there's anything we can do better. Whatever the problem is, it's something they've been trying to figure out who to call. What I do in Business First is to give them a direct path to solutions. And that is what's rewarding to me. But I'm looking at you, the audience, right now when I say and challenge you to participate or to volunteer to participate in Business First and its programs like this that will enable us to become a tier one city. Well, I've worked for the City of Richmond Department of Planning and Development Review in the Zoning Division for a little over 12 years now. And my main responsibility is with commercial and small business development projects. I handle, along with Mr. Ray Abbasi, all of the small business uh, permits that come into our office. It's a very important program because under the small business program, we actually can fast track the applications. Instead of it taking a week to 10 days, we can actually cut down the application review and submittal time to as little as three days. So it's a really good opportunity for small business owners to uh, get their businesses up and running quickly and or expand their business quickly. And that's one of the most important parts of my job and one of the most satisfying parts of my job. I also review basic zoning uh, permits, building permits involving commercial and, and small business developments. I uh, do plan and development reviews. We handle a uh, board of zoning appeals cases. And also just recently, our department was uh, assigned responsibility for the Sidewalk Cafe program. And that's another fast track program where restaurants can establish si uh, outdoor dining areas on city sidewalks. Instead of going through the encroachment process, which can take four or five months public hearing process, they can go through this program, which is once again a fast track program, and we try to turn around their permit applications in three weeks or less. So I have a very uh, challenging job uh, with a lot of rewards to it and very pleased to be part of the City of Richmond's uh, economic development team. Well, personally, it's, it's always gratifying to be part of a, a, a successful and hardworking team like you have here at the department and to be able to, to contribute to the successes that you all have, have enjoyed over the years. So, you know, that personally, that's, that's the big part of it for me is being part of a winning team. I'd just like to take a minute to thank Sheila. She's a driver. She's a slave. She's a pusher and a driver. Uh, and without her um, enthusiasm and without her um, uh, drive and push, um, you wouldn't see me here today. And, uh, but second to her, I would like to thank the businesses in Richmond. They're the ones that let me in their door to collect the information that is integral to the Business First program. And um, John Cario, a C over here, I've met um, as a result of this program. And I've made a lot of nice relationships. And um, thank you, Sheila. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with everything that Julian just said, particularly about Sheila Shepherdson and her compatriot, Betty Ann Teeter. Um, as a native Virginian, it's an, indeed an honor and a privilege to work for Virginia's capital city. And for that reason, this award is very, very special to me. It means a great deal. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask uh, if there are other members of the Business First Volunteer Program, if they would stand up so we can recognize everybody that might be here that's a part of that program. Well, having said that, uh, I'd like to once again congratulate everybody for 
the awards, all the efforts that we put forward. Um, if we could just give everybody one more big round of applause and everybody in the room. And knowing business and knowing that I've kept you a couple minutes over, I'm going to be very brief. Um, I would like to, before we close, this was a great event. Took a lot of planning, a lot of coordination. I'd like to thank Sheila. She'd stand up and be recognized. And with that, the support she got from the Department of Economic and Community Development, if the staff and anybody else in the city who worked on this to make this success would just stand up and be recognized, I'd appreciate it. In wrapping up, what I wanted to say is uh, thank you, thank you everybody, thank you business community. Um, as you're out there every day, but especially today, as you, as you eat lunch, as you, uh, you know, pick up your dry cleaning, as you go to the store, as you use the services, you buy something in the city, as you drink a beer sitting out in a deck somewhere, remember that this is Richmond, this is our business community. And um, continue to support them and that's what makes the city great. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.